The following content includes hunting scenes. Parental guidance is recommended for viewers under 12. But Texas has a problem. These hogs never stop 24-7. They're just tearing this place up. Still hunting, but really what we like to do too is hog hunting. That was definitely smoke. <gasps> Look at that. They're ugly, aren't they? <laughs> there is a place in the world for hogs. It's delicious. I mean, a pig's a pig. And if you like pork, wild hogs, especially the younger ones, make just fantastic table fare. Awesome. We're using the, the kill lights on the bows, whether it's red, green, blue, and we're shooting those hogs at night and having a great time doing it. Swung his rear end just a little bit and presented that quartering shot away, and it was there. This is what you call a kill spot right here. The kill light strikes again. I guess you could say we had a successful night. Wild boar. 35 yard shot beneath and, and he ran probably 100 yards. Yeah, yeah, it longer. makes him very short. So if you'd been a little higher up, it would have been perfect if you had died very close to the blind. But uh, otherwise, I mean, you've shot uh, four arrows now and you've killed four animals. really old, gigantic boar. Look at this. Look at those tusks. The dollar peccary right here. Good hit, we shot the boar. that is you know when you're on the ground eye to eye there's nothing like it you can come around and get in range and get the full draw and they don't know you're there that's what bow hunting's all about it's about getting close getting in there these hogs never stop 24 7 they're just tearing this place up they're running our deer off so we've set some feeders up just to try to combat these hogs and uh because they're nocturnal most of them are only coming out at night, so that's about the only way we've been able to actually get the numbers down. There is a place in the world for hogs. In Africa, we have the warthog, we have the bush pig. They're indigenous to this area. The other animals don't compete for their food, and the warthogs don't compete for the other animals' food. And that's the harmony and the balance of nature that you really look for. Let me check this out. Look at that hog! <laughs> Look at that! They're ugly, aren't they? <laughs> but this one's a huge one. There's no question that scouting cameras can really give you an edge when you're hunting wild hogs. The cool thing is, is when you're running trail cameras in Africa for like warthogs or bush pigs, you're trying to get these animals to come in in daylight to the watering holes. And if you're trying to do that, you need pictures in daylight hours. But hunting, over these kill lights at night, it doesn't really matter what time these animals are coming in at. I'm gonna go slip up there and uh, see if we can get on some hogs real quick. You know what, Chad and I, we've been uh, hunting this region of Texas for a long time since we were kids. We've always had a great time and we do a lot of the whitetail hunting, but really what we like to do too is hog hunting. That was definitely smoke. That was a good shot. That's awesome. That was a complete pass through on that one. The hogs have become such a nuisance. 
in this part of Texas and so many other different areas too. And we really try to figure out ways to take advantage of getting closer to those hogs and being able to shoot them at night. We're using the, the kill lights on the bows, whether it's red, green, blue, and we're shooting those hogs at night and having a great time doing it. I mean, we are covered up in hogs. Look, it does not spook them. The kill light does not spook them. The XLR 100. Look how bright this light is. Look at that. They're not afraid of this light at all. Those feeders go off at night. You know, they may go off at 10, 11, 12, and 1 o'clock at night. Stalking up on those hogs and have that kill light on the end of the bow. Turn that on with a pressure switch and shooting those hogs at night. As you can tell, this is what you call a kill spot right here. The kill light strikes again. I guess you could say we had a successful night. <laughs> but Texas has a problem. Found in every corner of the Lone Star State, root the menace known as the feral hog. Feral hogs have expanded their range from the islands and coastal areas of America to an alarming distribution into 45 states. Adventure bull hunter Tom Miranda has traveled to the Texas Hill Country to hunt these wild feral hogs. Beautiful morning in the Texas Hill Country. The Barnes Keith Ranch. We're gonna walk this creek bottom, they thought. And, and the pigs come out of the thick brush and feed on the roads. Nuisance animals are often invasive species or predators. Uh, for example, coyotes. In most places you can hunt coyotes year-round. You can hunt them anytime. Wild pigs are the same way. They're an invasive species. They were brought here and they've expanded their range and they destroy plants and crops and, and so many things. Hunting wild hogs is not only a benefit to landowners, but wild hog meat is delicious. I mean, a pig's a pig, and if you like pork, wild hogs, especially the younger ones, make just a fantastic table fare. Awesome. The next day, after several hours of waiting, a fine warthog male approaches, drinks and rolls in the mud. Gary carefully sights and releases the arrow, just as the warthog steps out of the mud. The arrow passes beneath the animal, grazing his belly and left foreleg. The warthog eludes them, and nearing darkness, the team returns to the water hole, hoping that the wounded animal might return to drink. We were starting to pack up our gear quietly and heard one more little crunch and looked out the corner of the blind and here come a uh, warthog with his nose on the ground, limping. Ricky, our professional hunter, looked out and said, oh my word, this was a warthog that uh, probably had been in a real, real bad fight or something. Gary cannot believe his luck. And as the moon rises behind him, releases an arrow. And so by uh, moonlight, per se, and without the uh, assistance of the fiber optic pins because it was so dark, we uh, made it an instinctive shot. Incredibly, the warthog gets up and again Gary releases a second well-aimed shot. The animal crashes into the reeds on the opposite side of the pond and falls dead. This one has a broken right front leg. Gary had wounded the first one in the left front leg. So what you do is divide the body in three. So Peter reviews so the species on the ranch and shows Jay their vital areas. 
and this time he was starting to walk away and I said, see, there it is again, same thing. He stopped, swung his rear end just a little bit and presented that quartering shot away and it was there. Oh, really? It's, it's, I'm telling you, it's a, a really top class trophy. And I gotta tell you, the warthog was probably one of my favorite animals on this on this trip. They come in, the the little piglets and the, the the sow and they run around and they 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 just do all kinds of weird things. I mean, they're the entertainment of, of the of the uh, blind, no question. He got down in the mud and rolled around. And I kept thinking, boy, what a neat shot opportunity when he was laying kind of on his side, uh, completely preoccupied. Jay finally has his shot. And I pulled back, and held my pin, and it, that was about a 35-yard shot, and just absolutely blazed him. Uh, underneath, and, and he ran probably a hundred yards. It's a shot. Well, I looked all right. All right, you're gonna give me credit on that one. Well, I'll have to check it out first. These lower tusks, if you hold it up there, but they, the lower tusks wear against the upper tusks. See? Oh yeah. See that? Yeah, because it's it makes them very sharp. These, unfortunately, have been broken. I've heard people say these are ivory. That's, that's not true. Yeah, it is ivory. It's actually ivory. Yeah, but not like not, not like the quality. Ivory. Yeah, quality of an elephant. Yeah. It is ivory. So if you'd been a little higher up, it would have been perfect if you died very close to the blind. But uh, otherwise, I mean, you've shot uh, four arrows now, and you've killed four animals. Uh, I think that's due to you, <laughs> due to you, due to a great pH, a good team yeah. all the way around. While in the bush, one of the trackers comes across the warthog that Gary had wounded a week earlier. Scott grabbed his bow, took off, got over there with Jay. Jay's carrying the camera. Well, here is the hog that I had wounded, and he's coming out of the hole. With Jay running camera, Scott is successful in killing the warthog. Through the bush, and the sun starts coming up, and it's a fire. I mean, it's just a red fire. I mean, it just... So we're looking for camp meat and uh, decided if this one came in range, we'd take a shot at it. We switched from our broadheads that we're using for the small game, and I happen to have two Fred Bear razor heads. The arrow just picked it up from the wild boar and the luminox still on and you can see the massive uh, bleeding. Looks like a tremendous shot. So. Looks like a great shot. We were fighting all the time over the corn and uh, this one here was uh, putting a run on the other one uh, a lot and uh, Bondi kept saying, it's the one on the left, it's the one on the left, and I knew we hit him, and, and the, since it went through the shoulder, and uh, I mean, they're an enormous animal, they're 150 to 200 kilos, which is 300 to 400 pounds, and so uh, he, he didn't go far at a great blood trail, and uh, we got a great troop.
<laughs> Thank you. He's a great. This great boar came in tonight, and I maybe jumped the gun, and uh, and it looked a little bit high, but uh, with Illuminoc, he took off, and uh, it was a really solid hit, and and I mean they are a solid tank of an animal. So uh, he came up the hill here, probably 75 yards, and uh, if that, and uh, this is where we found him. And boy, I must have hit him really well with that uh, bear razor head and the new bear attack bow. So uh, we got a great trophy and he's got great tusks. Huge monster. You saw him? Come here, come here and shoot again. Come near me. Get the tree. My God. Well, we thought our hunting day was over, and uh, you never know. We came by the blind where we sat two nights ago for wild boar and got a great one on video just before dark it's not the sun isn't even down and we're driving back and drove by the blind and all of a sudden here's this gigantic wild boar had been feeding on the leftovers from last night and the fruit and vegetables that are out here and we quickly bailed out of the truck and uh, I had very little time to get ready or anything but I did draw on him and just as I drew he turned I shot him a little bit angling away but that arrow buried right in, in his chest, the front of his chest. And you know, he's only gone 20 yards and we, we were able to finish him off here, but he's just enormous. He's really old, gigantic boar. They said 350 kilos, which is 700 pounds. I mean, he's just bigger than most bears we get, certainly most grizzlies we get. So he's just a gigantic pig and people say they haven't seen one like this. I mean, he's just unbelievable. How do we get him out of here? You pull him with the truck? This is the first bow hunt uh, on this estate, and we're fortunate enough to be the first bow hunters. We've got a thousand wild boars, they take about 500 a year. We're hoping later on in the week we'll participate in a driven hunt where they'll have guys in the bush and dogs and they'll drive the wild boars through certain locations and across some of these valleys. And hopefully we'll get a couple of shots. It's going to be interesting, they've said take running shots. So it depends on how close we get. <laughs> 
uh, <laughs> probably a little bit too far back. But. And the shot's dead center in the ribs, so I just wish I got more penetration. Yeah. They, the boys had a bet. They said 50 meters. Well, I didn't. I'm so nervous at that distance, but I shot behind two trees, and I just had a little crack between those trees to shoot, so he couldn't see me draw, and the sound was muffled by the trees, so he didn't jump. He's just a, he's a tremendous bodied animal, isn't he? Lots of interaction between the small ones and the big ones. And when typically just like in with bears, when the big one arrives, everybody else scatters. It's a, just great hunting these. And when I arrowed this just now, it looked pretty small. I thought, well, you know, it's a small body animal, but that's 200 kg, that's 400 pounds, <laughs> you know? Very small baby. That, that's, a, that's a big animal. South America, too, has a hog problem. Argentina's fertile farmlands are overrun with wild pigs. The gauchos of Argentina primarily work the large cattle and sheep ranches of the La Pampas and often hunt the wild hogs for food. This, 100% La Pampas wild Russian boar. Look at the chompers on that thing. Look at his big teeth. That's about as crazy as it gets. One of the gauchos was out here riding, and he saw a group of hogs come down into his grass. And so at lunch, they talked about us coming up here because it's been so warm today. We got walking around in here, and we couldn't see anything, and nothing was moving. It's noisy. All of a sudden, Gonzalo goes, he's right there. Unbelievable. This thing is like staged up. It's really tall, thick grass. I walk around, try to get an angle on him. I took a shot, hit him in the leg. Got another arrow knock, he went into another bunch of bushes. It's difficult when you're shooting through this really stiff, tough grass like this because I'm using open on impact rage, two blade extremes, and when they hit grass or sticks or anything, they deploy. And if they deploy early, it's not a good thing. So you really need a clear shot at the animal. And that's probably what happened on the first arrow. But well, we got a second one in him, and we got it done. Wild boar in Argentina, it doesn't get any better than that. What a fantastic up close and personal hunt. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Good job, pal. <laughs> this is a gaucho and his horse who actually saw the hogs and told us at lunch that we could maybe come back here and, and get an opportunity. Check this out. This is crazy stuff right here. This pig is a big boy. Look at this. Look at those tusks. <laughs> Look at those chompers. I don't know how much it weighs. What do you think? Easy about 130 kilos. 130 kilos. Yeah. Easy. He's got mud all over him, wiry hair. Look at his feet right here. That's as big as a whitetail buck track. The wild boar is also known as the Eurasian wild pig. This species is one of the widest ranging mammals in the world. It's thought that these pigs originated in Southeast Asia in prehistoric times and spread into the Old World where some were captured and domesticated. These domesticated pigs are the animals that were then relocated to the Americas and South Pacific Islands by early travelers. That are trying to bay up a peccary. So it's an exciting situation when it all comes together. We got it. Win. Good job, man. Good job. Great. Collared peccary, right here. What an exciting hunt. He's down. Wow. I got this little camera running on my bow right here. Hopefully I picked up the shot on this video too. They got a trail chopped out in here for us. chopped a trail out to this collared peccary. You call them a collared peccary because of this collar right here. 
This is my shot right there. Two blade Rage Extreme. Ape tail with the igniter lighted knock. You can really see it up good in this thick brush. This is a peccary. This is a indigenous animal to the area. And look at his look at his choppers. Look at that. It's a male. Very nice. Probably got into about six yards in this thick brush, but never would have gotten the opportunity without the dogs. Yeah, you can set up a blind and try to hunt over bait, or you can try to spot and stalk along the brush, but in Argentina, a lot of times they use dogs just like we do for cougars back home. Uh, it's an accepted way to hunt. There's a lot of these peccaries around, so there's opportunities uh, all the time for them, but they're also a nuisance. So uh, we were really fortunate this evening just before dark. What a fantastic, fantastic animal. The unique thing about being an adventure bow hunter and traveling to different continents, different countries to hunt is that you have a lot of friends around the world. When you go to an outfit like Cerro Indio and you meet Gonzalo, you immediately become friends. I mean, he wants you to be successful and you become a team, hunter and guide, as you go on your quest, whether it's for the capybara or the red deer or brocket deer or whatever you're hunting. A lot of these animals can be challenging, especially with bow and broadheads. And uh, you spend day after day, hour after hour, you know, eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner with somebody who really wants you to be successful, who really enjoys hunting. You can't help but become their friend. New Zealand is kind of an agricultural nation in the sense that there's a lot of sheep ranching there, there's a lot of farms, and, and the sheep ranches are called stations. And my pal Simon Bullivant and I were hunting hogs on one of these sheep stations. Now they're pests, you can shoot as many as you can, and uh, it's basically the same thing as hunting hogs in Texas, except for you don't have all the sticker bushes. Uh, all the wild mammals in New Zealand are all introduced. Species like the pig were actually brought here by Captain Cook himself. Uh, and uh, a, a certain species of pig that are here, we actually call Captain Cookers. Because of that early release, they, they have spread everywhere, um, all over New Zealand. Well, Simon and I are working this ridge and we've come across a dead lamb. It's lambing season here in New Zealand and uh, as these sheep drop these lambs, these wild boars and sows are all on top of it. Now, these hogs are after the afterbirth, they're after the, the baby lambs, and uh, that's why we get opportunities to hunt some of these concessions and these big sheep ranches. Though feral hogs typically won't attack a grown ewe, they will attack abandoned or sick lambs. The sheer number of hogs in close quarters stress the pregnant ewes, which causes an increase in stillbirths and lamb mortality. Wild hogs can easily devastate pastures and croplands as they root in search of tubers and insects. Sheep ranchers often deploy traps in an attempt to control hog numbers. The use of dead sheep as bait proves that hogs have a taste for mutton. In these places where the hills aren't mountainous, uh, the wind swirls a lot and it takes a lot of planning uh, and you have to get good strategies to give yourself good opportunities on these pigs. Excellent pig, excellent pig. Great shot, great shot to Dermot. Didn't go anywhere. Great fun, great times. Our job is to try and reduce the number of pigs that are coming out onto the farms and to try and keep them away from the newborn lambs. Good hit. We shot the boar. The muddy one. It's 
pretty exciting when you can get on these hillsides. We had these hogs molesting the sheep. They just wouldn't leave her alone. And when we got over here, you could hear the ewe just making noises and making noises, trying to get these hogs to leave. We slip around here, get in position. I'm sure you didn't go far. Let's go find him. Look at that two-blade raging stream. Blood soaked all the way down. Well, we gave him 30 minutes, and it's already gotten dark on us, so we started following the blood trail. You can see right here, there's just a huge amount of blood. Uh, he went down in this creek, and he's following this creek, and we're only about 45 or 50 yards from where we actually shot. He did go 100 yards. New Zealand wild boar. Check him out. <laughs> Look at this. Look at that hog. We immediately went into gear, kind of slipped around, got the wind right, come right in. I'll tell you what, it's fun when you can do spot and stalk on these animals because it's just, it's a real hunt. Knowing that pigs are prolific breeders and adapt well to nearly any habitat, English, Dutch, and Spanish explorers left pigs along their travels, knowing that the hardy animals would provide a good supply of fresh meat for subsequent voyages. An interesting fact is that the term buccaneers comes from an old Caribbean word, boucan, which refers to a smoker that was used to preserve meat. Groups of men were left behind along shipping routes to hunt the wild cattle and hogs, then smoke meat for use on return voyages. These men often turned to piracy. Thus, pirates were often called buccaneers. Yeah, we just stopped in on what we thought was a bull. It was a big pig. It was actually a really large sow by itself. Usually sows are with family groups with small pigs and other sows, maybe some boars, but it was a lone sow, which you don't see very often. I've got a good feeling there's going to be boars up ahead. It's a perfect time of the day. And getting it done. This big boar took a two blade rage extreme and ran about 65, 75 yards and piled up right here. We cleaned him up a little bit. Look at those tusks. Unreal.
38 yards, full draw, let it go, and it flew straight over his back, startled him. He'd just come out of there real quick and then cut across. I was able to grab another arrow out of my quiver, re-knock, adjust my sight to 30 yards, and shot over his back again. Two misses on one pig. You know what, that's bow hunting. You know, a lot of times it gets a little bit breezy, you're kind of guessing the yardage. I mean, I had the yardage attack for that. I don't know how I shot over him. Here I didn't know, I just guessed. But still, just shot a little bit high. Lucky there's a lot of pigs in Australia. We're gonna hopefully get another chance. That's how big that is. <laughs> That's a giant. I just hope the other one's there on the other side. He is a giant boar. What a fantastic hunt. You know, anytime you can go somewhere you've never been and hunt an animal you've never seen, it's adventure bow hunting. What a fantastic hunt. You know, when you're on the ground eye to eye, there's nothing like it. And when you can slip on slide on these animals and you can come around and get in range, and get the full draw and they don't know you're there. That's what bow hunting's all about. It's about getting close, getting in there. a big old male. Just happened to run into one today on the way to Buffalo Hunt. Great spotting by our guys. Lado, thank you very much for seeing that. Initially I thought I would shoot with a four blade, but after the boar lay behind the anthill, I decided to change to something that would penetrate the anthill if necessary. The boar had hidden in the shade of the anthill and did not understand what pricked it. The shot in the heart dropped it dead, and only the big white cockatoos spread the news of what had happened. Their shrieks would inform every living thing in a radius of one kilometer that there were dangerous creatures here. the Magnus 100 grain. The ants can't believe it. The arrows only be there a few seconds and uh, 
Yeah, just think it's heaven. We would collect the trophy later. Greg had seen something in the distance and wanted us to check it out. Huh. Well, there was a nut. Oh, boy, they're tough. Yeah, it's fermented. I must get drunk. Thanks, I wonder if you can do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, must have strong yeah. yeah, but there's a nut. Here was the answer why the boars did not sense it when I hit them, but continue to suck on the hard nuts. Alcohol does not forgive anyone. Maybe the local Aborigines eat and drink the same fruit. The arrow, which had pierced both boars, was still on the ground. But Mark would not believe it and wanted to see it on the video. Well, Mark, I think you believe it now. Female full of baby, a young a female full of baby, yeah. and then something ten kilos, even smaller than that one.
On stand over a water hole, Miranda watches as an afternoon dust devil forms and rolls over his setup. back camera guarding the dead giraffe, it reveals signs of bush pig feeding in daylight hours. In fact, both bush pig and brown hyena are visiting the stinking carcass. Bush pig hunting, one of the exciting hunts to do. Uh, bush pig are very, very uh, alert. They can hear extremely well. The sense of smell is very good. Uh, it's an inexpensive hunt and they are beautiful. They've got different colors on them, red, black. They've got the silvery white mane on the back, elf-like ears. Bushpigs are aggressive. They can be dangerous if you wound them. So it's a very exciting hunt. It's also a challenge to be quiet and your lighting has, has got to be good because the bushpigs are so wary. When you switch the light on, they'll just bolt. Exciting. There's nothing like hunting bush pig. They call it the poor man's leopard hunt. I mean, you just can't do it enough. They're cunning, they're sly, and they fooled us again. We had bush pigs coming into this dead giraffe at like four o'clock in the afternoon. So we come in here early, set up, hoping that we'd see them in the daylight. Got later and later, finally got dark. We decided to wait it out. Two hours into the darkness, we heard brush breaking and snorting and grunting. And here they come. Zach hit the light. I put the pin on him and shot. But I got a real good feeling because I heard crashing in there. And I'm absolutely sure we've got us a really nice bush pig. Let's just give him a few more minutes. Let me settle down. We'll climb out of the tree and we'll go see him. Arrow's right over here. Covered in blood, covered in blood. Two blade rage extreme, giant cut. Igniter lighted knock, showed the hit, and helped us get the blood trail started. Let's just leave this arrow right here. Mark the trail, and we'll look for blood here. Oh yeah, look at this. Look at this. Look at this right here. Yeah, check that out. All oh, that blood right there. All over. Just gushing out, gushing, gushing. I know it's gonna be kind of tight through these reeds. Look at that blood. There's a hog right there. Didn't go 40 yards. Oh man, let me get in here. These reeds are tough. It's definitely one of the ones we had on trail camera. Look at the white. Big old white streak down the back, huge ears, tusks sticking out right there. And on bush pigs, if the tusk's sticking out, that means it's a pretty doggone nice one. I was aiming for right here on the opposite side because the pig was facing this way and I was shooting this way. But I couldn't see my reticle on my sight. I've got a prototype IQ Pro Hunter three pin. Not planning on hunting in the dark, so I had no lights on it at all. Touched the release and I shot in front of the shoulder, right through the neck. The Rage 2 Blade Extreme gets the job done. You know, coming to Africa, it's my 37th time. There's nothing like it. If you never had the opportunity to go bush pig hunting, like I said in the tree, it's poor man's leopard hunt. It's exciting, it's fun every time, and there's tons of bush pigs around. They're cunning and they are beautiful animals, and they are tough to get. What an incredible hunt. Thanks for being with me.
When it comes to hog hunting and the diversity of indigenous hogs, the continent of Africa stands alone. With warthogs, giant forest hogs, river hogs, and bush pigs, wild hog hunting on the dark continent is as challenging as it is exciting. Dispersed in a huge range across sub-Sahara Africa, warthogs are pests in most farming areas and a welcome game animal in the bush fell. For me, one of the coolest animals to hunt in Africa is the warthog. I mean, they're just neat. You see them all the time. And a big mature male is easy to spot because he's got those four giant warts on his face. And of course, the giant tusks. And when they curve out of that muzzle and they come around and you see them, uh, there's no mistake a trophy warthog. giant warthog, 15 yards right in front of the blind. Grabbed my bow, throttled him, but when he ran out, he ran right into that tree and broke off. His tusk just flew off into the brush. I can't believe it. Unbelievable. Let me tell you, look at this warthog. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this to go in. Totally. Oh, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> I got it in there. That's what he looked like when I shot him. Look at that. Probably the most prized pig of Southern Africa is the bush pig. This rare footage captures the secretive pigs in daylight as they're nearly exclusively nocturnal. Shy and very elusive, Bush pigs can be baited into areas where tree stands or well-hidden blinds can be placed by stealthy hunters to be used as an ambush under the cover of darkness. Well, it's pitch dark now and we're set up on the bush pig bait. The trail camera says that they're going to be coming in in probably two hours or so, so we're going to just sit back and wait. Pretty exciting. This is a cheap man's leopard hunt. Uh, you get in the tree and you wait and hope, and uh, they're very spooky. Uh, bush pigs can be very tough to get into a bait and even tougher to bring down. And it's hard to shoot at night, so we're going to kind of settle in here. It's a cool evening, so wish us luck. Yeah, right here's where the pig was when I shot. And there's some blood right there. Yes, right there. There's a pig right there. Yes, he's down. Oh, I just about snuck up on him. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Beautiful, beautiful bush pig. You know, I think wild hogs are a blessing <laughs> and a curse. I think they're a blessing to a bow hunter who loves to shoot and shoot a lot. The curse is what these animals are doing to our environment. The fact that they're chewing up uh, all the wild habitats. They root up and destroy everything. And their populations are, are basically out of control at this point. And if you ever get the opportunity to do it, I'd give it a try because it'll be some of the funnest hunts you've ever done. 